Hello, and welcome to the third video in the basic ECL concepts video series. In this video, we will briefly cover ECL's operators and data types, focusing mainly on anything that might be a little different in ECL than most other languages' implementation. ECL's arithmetic operators are the standard ones in most languages. ECL supports three forms of division, normal, integer, and modulus. For all three forms, division by zero results in zero, not an error condition. The bitwise operators are all pretty straightforward. They are all designed to operate on our integer data types. The comparison operators are equally straightforward. Note that you have your choice of how to represent not equals. The greater than or equal to operator must be angle equal and not equal angle because there's another operator used in several functions that is equal angle. The angle equal angle operator is the same as the Perl operator that we took it from. In the expression A angle equal angle B, if A is less than B, then it returns minus 1. If A equals B, then it returns 0. And if A is greater than B, then it returns 1. This is useful for doing things like collating sequences. We use the plus sign as our string concatenation operator. The logical operators allow you the choice of using NOT or the tilde as the logical knot. Note that there is no XOR. The logical operator section in the language reference explains how to accomplish XOR if you need to. The in operator is the same as it is in SQL, a shorthand for a collection of OR conditions. In this example, the expression state in set southeastern states is logically equivalent to state equals Florida or state equals Georgia or state equals Alabama or state equals South Carolina. And unlike some SQL systems where using in with a static set of values is not recommended, the ECL in operator is highly optimized. You should always use it instead of the collection of OR conditions. The between operator is also exactly the same as it is in SQL, returning a Boolean true or false indicating whether the seek val is between the inclusive range of low val to high val. Expressions in ECL are evaluated exactly as you would expect them to be from in to out and left to right. The Boolean data type is used to explicitly specify the return type for an attribute definition, or more commonly as the type of a past parameter. If a definition is defined with a Boolean expression, it will automatically be Boolean, so why bother to specify Boolean as the result type? If you do so, then you will get the syntax checker on your side, so that if you specify Boolean as the result type, and then fumble finger the expression so that it is no longer a Boolean expression, the syntax checker will complain. The integer type may be signed or unsigned. The n specifies the number of bytes for the integer. Valid values of n are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. The reason for all these sizes is so you may correctly size your integers to the exact range of values it is required to contain without wasting extra bytes. The default integer size is 8 bytes. We support both big endian and little endian integers. Because we run on Intel hardware, little endian is the default and big endian is supported only for data coming in from or going out to a big endian shop. Both specify exactly the same range of values. Real is an IEEE standard floating point type, either 4 or 8 bytes. The default is 8 bytes. Decimal is ECL's packed decimal format, supporting up to 32 digits of precision. If all terms in a, calculated are, in a calculation are decimal data types, then binary coded decimal math libraries are used to perform the calculation in base 10 math instead of binary. String is ECL's basic string type. It is space padded, 
not null terminated. The n specifies the number of characters in the string, and if the n is left off, you get a variable length string that will be sized at runtime to hold whatever value it needs to hold. ECL supports both ASCII and EBCDIC data, but since the hardware is Intel, the default is ASCII. EBCDIC is only used to take data in and send, ba send it back out to EBCDIC shops. All EBCDIC strings need to be converted to ASCII to operate within the HPCC environment. VARstring is ECL's null terminated string, used only to take data in and send it back out in null terminated format. There is no inherent advantage to using null terminated strings over our default space padded, space padded strings. Unicode is a UTF-16 character string, which is space padded. And var Unicode is the null terminated version. QString is a string type that stores each character in 6 bits instead of 8, which provides a 25% data compression. The trade-off is that it may only contain uppercase letters, numbers, and these specific special characters. The downside to QString is that the data appears to be binary data to any compression algorithm, so it doesn't compress as well as normal strings do. Therefore, it is only appropriate for use when the data will not be compressed. Data is a packed hexadecimal data type. This is good for storing blob type of data. Typecasting in ECL is done by putting the data type you want to cast to inside a set of parentheses, which makes it a casting operator, then placing that operator immediately to the left of the expression you want to cast. ECL's typecasting rules are documented in the language reference and are similar to most languages' casting rules. String constants in ECL are enclosed in single quote characters. Integer constants in ECL may be represented five ways. Decimal, two forms of hexadecimal, and two forms of binary. Floating point constants always have fractional portion, even if that fractional portion is zero. You may use scientific notation to define a floating point constant. The set of syntax is used to explicitly define the data type for every element in a set. This is also used to define set parameters passed to a function. One thing that you can do with a set of values in ECL is to index into that set to get a single element. In this example, the set nums attribute is defined as a set of five integer values, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. The last num in set attribute is then defined as set nubs sub 5, which will give you the fifth element in the set, the value 1. Yes, that's right, ECL uses 1-based numbering, not 0-based. The index number specifies the ordinal position within the set of the element to use. Indexing into sets is useful, so we adapted that same syntax to index into strings so that my string sub 3 references the third character in my string, the letter C. We also expanded this syntax to reference ranges of characters in strings. My string sub 2 period period 4 specifies the second through the fourth characters. My string sub period period 4 specifies all characters up through the fourth. My string sub 2 period period specifies all characters from 2 onward. This indexing into a string is the only way to slice and dice strings in ECL. There is no substring function. Okay, let's briefly restate the things we've just gone over. 1. Any division by 0 results in 0. 2. There are 8 integer sizes, both signed and unsigned. 3. ECL's base string type is space padded. 4. Indexing into a set or string is one based. This concludes this video. Thank you.